All right, here's the concept we're talking about. We're gonna talk about this idea of compositing. Compositing is the combining of visual elements from separate sources into single images, often to create the illusion that all of those elements are parts of the same scene. Of course, in you know modern media, we can't always tell the story that we wanna tell with just one thing on the screen, right? Uh, movies, if they just put raw footage on the screen, they'd be a lot different. They'd be pretty boring, a lot of green and uh, probably pretty lame, honestly. Um, and we need to be able to composite different elements onto the screen at the same time. So you might have a foreground, uh, background elements, different overlays, things like that. Um, this is an example of kind of a compositing workflow where you have an original layer. You have a what we call a mat that takes the original layer and removes some elements. And then we have a blended image and a final image. We do this in uh, church all the time. We can't, you know, one great example of not being able to tell the story with one thing on the screen is when we do worship. We need to be able to put lyrics on the screen. When we do a sermon, we need to be able to put the scripture support on the screen. This is all compositing, and this is all examples of how we can't just do what we need to do with just one thing on the screen at the same time. Now, in post-production world in film, you have, I mean, almost unlimited amounts of compositing resources at hand. You have all different layers, effects, things that you can put on. Uh, you can do a ton. And we might not have that much available to us in the live production world, um, but we do have a few things available to us. Uh, and the main one of which are called keyers. And on the Carbonite, there's actually, um, we actually have five different elements that we can work with uh, to create a, a final composition. So if we step through them, we have a background, of course, and that can be a camera shot, that can be a blank background, that can be almost anything, any source on the switcher we can make and choose as our background. But then on top of that, we can have uh, up to four keyers on the Rust Carbonite. There's different examples for different switchers, but so we've got key one, uh, will show up on top of the background, and in the Carbonite, um, on our switchers, key two, we can turn that on and that'll show up on top of uh, both. We can turn key three on, that'll show up on top of the background, key one and key two, and then key four, that'll show up on top of all of them. But these are the five resources that you have available to create a composition on the Rust Carbonite. There's some more, but this is what we're gonna get into today and we're gonna talk about how to use these. So you have five, five layers basically, and that's, that's kind of what I want you to think of these as, is layers. Um, we'll call them keyers, but we're going to get into a couple ideas of keying, video keying, and actually like removing parts of an image. But um, in this context, think of keyers as like layers. So if you want to stack multiple things on top of each other, you use your keyers in order to do that. Now, if we just turned on, uh, this is just a visual example what we have right here. If we turned on um, the background and then turned on key one, just default, you know, plain settings, it would just show up right on top of the background and it would override it. And if we turn on key two, it would show up on top of key one and key three. So you get this idea that this is what actually happens on the switcher is these things stack on top of each other, but we need to be able to tell the switcher, hey, how do we want these to look or what parts of these do we want to make uh, transparent, right? So when we put lyrics on the screen, you guys have probably done this before, where if you put lyrics on the screen through a keyer, but you forget to uh, enable the keyer, where the lyrics then just show up uh, just like they do on the computer where it just you have your camera shot and then you key lyrics on and it's just black and white text and it doesn't actually make it transparent, right? That's actually what happens when you don't have the right type of, uh, of, of key selected. So it's just showing up right on top of the background and it's not actually removing anything. So this idea of like removal is kind of what we're gonna dive into today. How to make different elements of a key source transparent. And actually, I'm throwing some language out. Let me talk about this. Two components of a key when we talk about removing things. You have what we call a fill, or we'll also say source. Um, but this is how the image looks uh, raw, coming right off of the computer, right off of the camera. So this example of like a green screen, a weatherman in front of a green screen. This is how the camera shot looks just straight up. But then we'll also have an alpha mat. And this is what the switcher will generate in order to tell the image or the keyer what parts to make uh, transparent. 
So what you can kind of think of this formula of like your fill times your alpha mat becomes your final image. And I'm just using this checkerboard pattern to represent uh, transparency. Um, but what would actually happen is your background would show up behind that, whatever you have selected on your background layer. So, uh, so if that makes sense, your fill times your alpha mat. So everywhere, uh, if you think about this, everywhere in your alpha mat that is white, oh, I'm using green, that's a bad example, but everywhere in your alpha mat that is white, that's gonna become fully opaque. And that's what we see here where it's fully opaque it's totally visible. You can't see through it at all. And then everywhere in your alpha mat that is black, do this. The switcher is gonna make fully transparent so you can see through it com completely. And then anything that's like gray or kind of halfway in between is gonna make half opaque or half transparent, however you wanna think about it, glass half empty, glass half full, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but that's how the switcher is going to composite these elements uh, into each other. So every key is gonna have a fill and an alpha mat. So how do we get this? How do we get this alpha mat? There's a couple different methods where we can get this. So the, uh, and we're gonna talk about three specifically. The first one we're gonna talk about is a chroma key. And this is actually uh, generating the alpha mat based on a color in the image. So the green screen is a great example of that. But anytime you see like behind the scenes footage, on uh, you know movies or something like that, a chroma key is gonna take out anything that's a specific color. A lot of times they use green because it's a pretty uncommon color. Uh, and it's going to generate this alpha mat for us based on, hey, what's, uh, what in this image is green? Make that fully transparent. What in this image is not green? Make that fully opaque. So chroma key, remember that one? Then we've got a uh, luma key. And a luma key is going to generate this alpha mat based on the brightness of whatever it, your fill is. So for instance, this guy's wearing a black jacket. That's not very bright. That's a, a darker color. That's going to generate this alpha mat or this, yeah, this luma mat. And it's going to make his jacket, anything that's in that area, fully transparent. And then his shirt is white. That luma mat is going to um, create white in that area. And that's going to be fully opaque. And what you're gonna end up with is something like this. So you've got your fill times your key or your luma mat. And then you can end up getting this nonsense in this case, but where his jacket is fully transparent, his shirt is fully opaque. Uh, and that's the idea of a, a luma key. And then last thing we have is an alpha key. So this actually takes, uh, it's kind of the same idea. Um, well, not really. We'll talk about these on, this, on the Carbonite. There's some shared properties between these and Luma Key, but uh, this actually takes a completely separate source and uh, composites it with the fill to create your final output. So in this case, we actually have two separate video files running. Uh, and these are generated together, but they're two separate files, so one is a tr they're both a transition element, but one is actually what we want the audience to see. And the second one is the mat that we actually wanted to um, manually control what the switcher makes transparent or opaque. And so we can lock these things together. Applications like ProPresenter or Resolume can generate these two separate outputs for us based on what kind of media we have loaded, uh, whether they're video files with transparency, um, and they can actually do this for us but the switcher just takes a separate input, a completely separate input on the switcher in order to uh, use as the alpha mat. And so you'll hear this like uh, key fill workflow or fill and alpha uh, workflow where you have a fill source and an alpha source um, as two separate inputs. But that's what an alpha key is doing is it's taking two separate sources on the switcher, two, uh, two separate inputs on the switcher and combining using one as the fill and one as the alpha mat. So you get your final output. Looks like that.